Hello and welcome to this CBT Nuggets Micro Nugget entitled Configuring TCP IP in Windows for Workgroups 3.11. I'm Tim Warner. No, you're not imagining things. This is a micro nugget recorded in 2013, focusing on an old, antiquated version of Windows. The purpose of this micro nugget is to help us appreciate as IT professionals how far TCPIP networking has come, as well as how much progress Microsoft has made with their operating system. Several people I know roundly dismiss and or diss the Windows 8 client operating system, but if we think back to the days of the earliest Windows and compare, there really is no comparison. So what we're doing today is stepping into a time machine going back to August 1993 when Microsoft introduced Windows for Workgroups 3.11. Now, what we're talking about with these initial versions of Windows, Windows version 1, 2, and 3, is a graphical shell that overlaid the actual OS. The OS itself is MS-DOS, Disk Operating System, which as you remember is a command line interface, completely 16-bit access, that's it. Your RAM was capped at under a megabyte, not gigabyte, but megabyte. And Windows 3.1 rode on top of DOS as a shell interface. Similarly to how today a PowerShell host application presents a candy-coated graphical front end such that when you issue commands in a PowerShell host app, what's actually happening under the hood is that PowerShell commandlets are being run. In the early days of Windows, it was the same deal. You would copy a file in Windows 3.1 Explorer and then under the hood, copy commands were being issued in DOS. Windows for Workgroups 3.11 was Microsoft's first corporate-based version of Windows. It gave us double the file access that Windows 3.1 had, 32 bits, which was a big deal at the time. Networking became more and more out in front in the business world, and to that end, Microsoft and IBM developed the NetBIOS protocol stack and the NetBuoy peer-to-peer networking protocol. Now, NetBuoy did not support routing. It did not support hierarchical names, so there's no DNS. There's none of that stuff, but for small peer-to-peer shops, it worked pretty well. Of course, as the internet, the World Wide Web, took more and more importance going into the mid to late 90s, people wanted to include TCP IP in their Windows installations. So we had Windows sockets or WinSock packages coming out. One of the major players was a third party called Trumpet WinSock. I remember using this myself on my dad's old 386 PC to get online using the Spry Mosaic web browser. Anybody remember that? Microsoft developed their own TCP IP stack, codenamed Wolverine, formal name Microsoft TCP IP 32 to denote a 32-bit TCP IP stack. And if we install this in Windows for Workgroups 311, it gives us the ability to do TCP IP networking. Before we get into the demo, the basic setup workflow that I used is I created a virtual machine. You can use any virtualization software. I happen to use VMware Workstation. The specs for your virtual machine are absurd. 16 megabytes. I mean, I have a box at my home, in my home office here, that runs 16 gigabytes of RAM. Your virtual hard drive, if you make one gigabyte, that's still way too much room. But it's just amazing to compare and contrast capacities and what was considered a lot of hardware in the early 90s compared to what we consider to be a lot of hardware nowadays. Now, as far as procuring the floppy disk images, I was pleasantly surprised to learn that as part of my Microsoft TechNet Plus subscription, I have access, legal access, to the MS-DOS 6.22 and Windows for Workgroups 3.11 binaries. These are floppy image files. I mean, who is going to have a 1.44 inch high density floppy drive in hardware nowadays unless you're a collector? So you can mount these images in your virtualization software just like you can ISO. So CD or DVD images. MS-DOS 622 is four images. Windows for Workgroups is eight disk images. And you also need Wolverine, the TCP IP32 stack. That's a single disk image. Now let's get into the demo. Here we are in an instance of VMware Workstation 9.0, and I've already installed MS-DOS 622 as well as Windows for Workgroups 3.11. I can verify MS-DOS version by typing ver, and we can type win to launch Windows for Workgroups. And 
and pardon the resolution issue here, there's no VMware toolset, and it's awfully difficult to get another updated, more powerful video driver installed in VMware Workstation for Windows 3.1. So we'll have to content ourselves with what you're seeing on screen right now. All right, let's jump right into the configuration here. From Windows 3.1.1 Program Manager, we want to go to the Network Program Group and double-click Network Setup. This gives us the opportunity to create a network. There's nothing in here by default. This is the default out-of-the-box configuration. We'll click Networks, and we're asked, what do we want to do? We're going to install the Microsoft Windows networking client software, and we'll click OK. It now asks us, OK, where is your network card? That was a big issue, wasn't it? Before Windows 95 and Plug and Play, you had to manually install all of your device drivers, and you'd have to know quite a bit, actually. Basically Basically, almost and including many of the CompTIA A plus skill set in order to be proficient in early versions of Windows. So in the network setup, we'll go to drivers, add adapter, and I'll select a NIC driver to use. You'll notice that it immediately gets bound to not only NetBuoy, Microsoft's peer-to-peer -peer protocol, but also IPX SPX compatible transport. This is Microsoft's implementation of the Novell Netware stack. Now IPX SPX is, was actually in its day a pretty advanced protocol. It did in fact separate network and host portions of an address, so it was routable. It was essentially driven out by, you guessed it, TCP IP. To add TCP IP, we go to Add Protocol. Now, if you don't see TCP IP 32 in the list, this means you haven't installed Wolverine. So make sure you've installed that. And by install, basically, what you just do is browse. You'd select unlisted or updated protocol, and then you would mount the disk image of Wolverine. It's going to be your A drive, of course, and you can load it up that way. So we select TCP IP 32. It brings in the binaries. I'm going to set this as my default protocol. It moves it to the top of the binding order, and then we'll click Setup. We could either do automatic DHCP, you know what all that is, right? I'm going to say no. Or you can hand code the address, which I'll do now. We can provide default gateway. And then, interestingly, no DNS, but it mentions WINS, which gives us the ability to use NetBIOS flat names in TCP. If we want to do DNS, we can hit the DNS button and add not only addresses, but also domain suffixes. This is some pretty hot shot networking here for sure. Under Advanced, we can assign or bind additional IP addresses and enable LM Hosts lookup. You'll recall if you go back this far, LM Hosts is a static text file that serves as a local lookup for NetBIOS names to IP addresses. It's directly analogous to the Hosts file that we have with DNS names. So if we OK out of here and close it, we now have ourselves a TCP IP setup. And we join, as you know, the work group by default and the username that's passed to other computers and a NetBIOS name that gets truncated at eight characters, as you see here, for the computer. There you have it, networking and Windows 3.11 for work groups. I hope that you enjoyed the nostalgia. I'm a big retro computer and gaming guy myself. And with that, I hope that this was informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.